When was the last time you took a leap of faith, trusting that everything is going to work out? Do you crave growth, or are you merely content with the status quo? If you want more out of your life, out of your career, and out of your relationships, you are in the right place. Take the leap and discover how to create a life by design, rather than living it by default. Real success starts with you. Now here's your host, Colleen Biggs. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Take the Leap. I am your host, Colleen Biggs. We are talking about one of my favorite subjects today, money, being wildly wealthy. And I have the perfect guest with us today because everything she talks about is being wildly wealthy. Miss Sandy Forster is with us all the way from Australia because podcasts reach all over the world. And she's going to be diving in as we talk about how can you be wildly wealthy? I know what's on your mind, so I know you don't want to go anywhere. And before we get started with our guest today, I want to thank the sponsor of today's show, The Adventures of Julie Jones and Get Shit Done. Are you overwhelmed and overworked with a never ending to do list? Do you constantly feel tired because life seems hard and your needs are nowhere? near the top of the priority list. Well, as an adventure and breakthrough coach, Julie Jones will support you in a life that is easy, effortless, and most of all, fun. Stop spending time on the have-tos in life and start truly living a life of I get to. What are you waiting for? Take action and go to juliejones.biz and book your 30-minute live out loud call with Julie. She is a great contact for you to have. She's a TV producer, an author, a podcast host. So I would definitely connect with her because there's no way you're not going to have fun in 30 minutes on a call with Julie Jones. So Julie, thank you so much for being the sponsor of today's show. All right. Well, let's go all the way over to Australia and bring in our next guest, Sandy Forster. She is the money mindset mentor for women worldwide who are ready to experience more abundance, prosperity, and money in their life. Sandy went from welfare to millionaire and was featured in Oprah's Aussie Secret and loves inspiring and empowering women to break through their blocks, attract abundance, and experience time and money freedom to do the things that make their heart sing. Her award-winning international bestseller, How to Be Wildly Wealthy Fast, has been too empowering. She got shut down. We got to talk about that today, (laughs) Sandy. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Colleen. I'm excited. I can't imagine anybody would shut you down for empowering and teaching other women how to be wildly successful. What happened there? What was that about? So my book was picked up by publishers around the world and a Chinese publisher wanted to publish it. But then the government stepped in and said, "Uh -uh, you're not publishing this. In Um, China. That makes sense. In China. So billions and billions of people are not Um, getting my book because China said no. Too empowering. Too too, too good. <laughs> you know, I, I think that's a compliment to you. And that also goes to show us in other countries um, how uh, our freedoms work, right? Oh, and, yeah. We are so blessed, like, yes. really. Like, I know yeah. we have our challenges as yeah. any country does, but honestly, we are, we are very blessed. Yeah. So, Sandy, you went from welfare. Let's talk about what was that life like? Because I was in that same situation and there's something about us that are survivors that push toward thriving, that there's just this endless uh, drive to do so. And I would love Mm -hmm. to talk with you about that because I think there's so many women out there that just need to wake that side up of them to realize money's not dirty. Money's not something that you shouldn't have an abundance of. And I think there's a a shift that can be made even on just today's show to that. So where were, what were your thoughts and where were you in your mindset when you were uh, back in those days on welfare? Yeah. So I was a hundred thousand dollars in debt and on welfare and uh, not a fun place to be. So I'd met my, my boyfriend in high school. We went out for uh, 11 years. We got married. I had a three-year-old and a six month old and we divorced, realized we were not suited and so I had a business designing and manufacturing swim and gym wear, thinking that, you know, this was going to be my thing because I really loved it. I've got a very creative side. So um, selling all this swimwear, I'd sew all winter and sell it all summer. But honestly, as a business, 
I was just getting further and further in debt and I ended up on welfare. I was receiving, I think it was, uh, so it was 15,000 Australian dollars, which at the time was 7,500 US dollars a year Mm. from the government to survive. Now, that is not survivable. No, that's less than $1,000 a month. So I was just going backwards, 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 and no idea how things could turn around. And then it was really super stressful. So I had no idea how my life would change. I was I was what I call a crummy mummy. I felt very frustrated, very angry, very um, short-tempered. I used to yell at my children. I just just was, I was a frazzled mess, basically. And I I really didn't know how things could turn around because I thought, well, even if I get a job and it's pretty good paying, it's going to take me, you know, as well as living, it's going to take me ages to pay off that debt. And I just was really, really at a place where, I had no idea what was what my future held. But what I did know was I felt like I'd been born into the wrong life. I felt like I wanted to be able to have freedom. My my number one value is freedom. I wanted freedom to choose what I did, when I did, where I went, what I experienced, what I could buy or not buy, when I could work or not work. Just I just wanted that freedom. And very blessed, thank you, I discovered the law of attraction. I discovered that your mind can help you create the life that you want. And honestly, that just, it blew my mind because instead of focusing on how my life was, which was, you know, renting a house, worried that they were going to either put up the rent or kick me out because they were going to sell it or something, Mm -hmm. uh, driving in a car that leaked so much that when it rained, it grew a plant in the back seat between Mm -hmm. my two kids, Um, you know, not being able to do all the things that I wanted to do, not being able to travel or even buy fresh flowers for home or go to the gym, like all the things I really enjoyed, living that life and not being able to do it. Instead, I found out that no, the law of attraction and and rewiring your subconscious mind was all about focusing on what you did want. Instead of focusing on how things were, in which case mm-hmm. you were attracting or creating more of that, instead focus on what you do want. And, oh, my gosh, like I said, it blew my mind because suddenly I could think about being a millionaire and owning my own home and travelling the world and, and working when I wanted to. And it just was so liberating and so beautiful and so it just made me feel so expansive and light and, and realise that there were possibilities. And the bottom line is, the, the very uh, quick sh- short story is I did exactly that. I dived into it. I created all these processes and exercises and I did just that. I went from welfare to millionaire. And so my absolute passion now is showing other women that no matter what your circumstances, you can turn yeah. it around through the power of the mind. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop you there because one, I've never heard anybody else say this. I think I was born into the wrong life. I've said <laughs> that to my husband a thousand times. Uh, and I, it's like, I don't know if I was born into the wrong era or the wrong family or the, I, you know, when you, you struggle because there's some part of your family you love, but then you think like, I think I was still born into, <laughs> you know, if someone would have put me in a wealthier family, I could have done so much more and made such a greater impact, but then we wouldn't have learned what we learned. Right. So exactly. I love that you said that. How many of you out there right now are thinking, I was born into the wrong life. I don't fit this. So that's your first clue, right? That's your first clue that you're not settled. So that's your first clue. And then you said all your thoughts were on what you didn't have. Your car was leaking. You wish you could have had. I I hear people say, I wish a lot. I wish I could have a different car or I wish, you know, this or I wish that like they have a genie or something. Right. So. But those are all signs of lack, because instead of saying, I will have a new car, I will be able to, you know, have it drive a Mercedes or drive whatever. And I will own vehicles that never leak. And, you know, their minds are really set on what their current circumstances are. So talk us through that, because this is what you do with your clients. And this is what you discovered. I love the law of attraction vision boards. I've got a million dollar check sitting there today. And my husband's like, great. How are we going to get a million dollars this year? I said, that's not for me to figure out. 
So yes. I just know that we need to take action toward it and everything else will align. And you really, truly, the belief part, I think, is the hardest part for people because they can say it. They can cut a picture out. They can put it on a vision board, but they still internally block themselves because they're like, yeah, right. Exactly. And you hit the nail on the head. It, yeah. it all comes down to belief and feelings. So like you say, you can have the vision boards and say the affirmations and do the visualization and, you know, any of the dozens and dozens of processes I teach, but there's sometimes a missing component. And the missing component is simply that you've got to align body, mind, and spirit. So you've got to align your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. So you can sit around and om until the cows come home, but million dollars is not going to drop into your lap. Like it's just, it's just not going to happen. So you really need to align body, mind, spirit, thoughts, feelings, and actions. And when you do that, that's when the magic happens. So for me personally, discovering the law of attraction made me realize that, yes, I had always been focusing on what I didn't want. So now instead, what you've got to focus on what you want. So for everyone that's listening today, if you're not living your ideal life, and, it, and, and that's going to be different for everyone. Like yeah. for me, it's about choices and freedom. That's my ideal life. For some people, it's about, I don't know, boats and cars and furs and jet skis and whatever. It, do, it doesn't matter. Everyone is different. For some people, it's about making enough money to, to help the underprivileged. Some of it, it's going to be a bit of everything. So it just really is about what makes your heart sing. But think about how you'd like that to be. And like you said, you do not get caught in the weeds thinking about how it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because when you get your logical mind involved to start with, you can sit there and have, you feel like a hamster on a wheel. It's running, 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 thinking, 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 how, 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 and your mind feels brain. like it's going to just, yeah. yeah, you feel like you're going to explode. Yeah. So instead, you just focus on what you want, think about it, and then feel as if it's already occurred. Mm-hmm. So what happens is when you spend that time in the feeling place and you really emit that energy out from you, out from your heart, feeling like it's already happened, feeling like you already have that beautiful home, that you own the home or you're travelling with your family or you, you've got the time to do whatever you want, mm-hmm. just all those feelings, you're sending an energy, a signal out into the quantum field and everything is made of energy, including us, our thoughts, every everything that we can see, can't see, it's all energy. I mean, science has proven that. We live in an amazing time that allows science to actually validate things that the ancients have known forever. So all that energy that you send out is going into the quantum field. And what happens is, and I don't want to get too scientific, but basically thought forms and and energy that's put into the quantum field, if if you focus on it enough, it turns from an energy into something physical. That's kind of the bottom line. So when you totally, if you don't believe it, like you said, if you don't really believe it, then you don't have the energy to really feel like it's happened. And so it won't happen. So that not believing it makes it not happen. But when you totally believe it, and sometimes it doesn't happen at the start. I know when I was $100,000 in debt and on welfare, I created an affirmation for myself. And it was um, about being a debt-free millionaire. And the first time I said, I am now a debt-free millionaire, my brain said, liar, liar, pants on fire. Yeah, (laughs) right. That that is so not what's happening here. You're barely surviving, Sandy. That's what your mind said. Yeah. Exactly. But I said it. I I put in some qualifiers. I think it was something like, um, I am so grateful that I am now in the process of becoming a debt-free millionaire. And I, I felt that that was okay. So I said that for a while and then it transitioned to, I am so grateful I am becoming a debt-free millionaire. And then it was, I am so grateful I am a debt-free millionaire. So it really is about um, saying whatever you can, feeling whatever you can around, you know, where you are now compared to where you want to be. And it's baby steps. It's just baby steps. It's just expanding your belief to the point where you really feel it's possible. And then when you really feel it's possible, that's when the universe, God, the divine, the metaphysical, behind the scenes start to create the magic, yeah. start to bring up opportunities and situations and circumstances into your life that allow you to then create that reality. But again, because I've talked about body, mind and spirit and talked about um, your thoughts, your feelings and your actions so you can think about it, then you can get to the point where you totally believe it and you feel like it's in your life. 
but then you have to take action. Mm -hmm. Again, that's part of the process, taking action toward your dreams. And when you combine those three, magic can happen. Yeah, you used a bridge there that I don't know if anyone caught, which is one of the most important pieces in being wildly wealthy, which is gratitude. I heard you say grateful about seven times. You want to talk about gratitude and how that plays a role? Yeah, gratitude is a secret ingredient, magic ingredient. It's it's so it's underrated. It's like yeast for bread, by the way. Yes, it yeah. is. It totally. So gratitude, it's like anything. The more you focus on something, the more you will attend, uh, uh, start to attract those things into your life. So if you start to be grateful consistently. So one of the ways I tell people to do this is uh, have a gratitude journal. So at the end of the day, Write down, you know, three to five things that you are grateful for. And what you'll find, maybe like I used to, I've got the gratitude journal. I'm going to write in it every day. I would just be not nodding off to sleep and suddenly it's like, oh, I've got to write my gratitude journal. And I pick it up and I'm like, what happened? What happened? What happened? And I write five things. Then over time, what happens is during the day, after something happens that you can be grateful for, you'll think, oh, I'll write that in my gratitude journal. And then your brain starts to look for things to be grateful for. That's where the magic happens. When you constantly are looking for things for things to be grateful for, you start to attract more things to be grateful for. Yeah. And gratitude is basically saying to the universe, thank you so much. So if you can be grateful in advance for something, mm-hmm. The universe and your brain says, I already have this in my life. Yeah. And when that's the energy you put out, it's so much easier to bring it into your life, into your physical reality. Yeah, I'll share a quick story. Um, I have a new car on my vision board that I created with my clients in uh, December this year. We did a little late. And... Um, And I would write it in my gratitude journal every day. I'm thankful for my new car that will transport my grandchildren to our new cabin and will transport the women to, you know, my clients come in town and I visually saw myself driving it. And we were all in one vehicle going to our escape room or our fun things that we would do. And I had all the women in my car driving them up to retreats and all the luggage fit. And I knew what color it was and I envisioned it. And every day I would say I was grateful for it. And, you know, all of a sudden I started looking online and and I magically landed this vehicle. And the guy on the day I was buying it at some little boutique I'd never known about, but found it online. He said, "There, I don't even know how you got this car. And I said, what do you mean? He said, I picked it up from an elderly couple. They bought it. It only had a couple thousand miles on it. Her husband passed away. They asked me if I could take it and sell it for them. I said, yes. I've had four people come by and say, I'm buying this car. And then all of a sudden, they just never show up again. And he goes, you're the only one that said I'm buying this car. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And then you said, can I give you a deposit? My husband will be there tomorrow. You had the paperwork sent over. You were checking along the way all week and then showed up on Friday and drove off with it. He goes, I literally don't know how you got this car. It should have been gone four people ago. And I said, I know exactly how I got this car. (laughs) It's the same one on my vision board, same outside color inside. And I just knew I was going to it was going to be mine. It yeah. was perfect. You had the belief and you took I the had action. the belief and yes. I knew that was going to be my vehicle. I didn't know where I was going to get it from, what boutique, what car, if it was a private owner. I didn't know anything, but I had to take action on something, meaning I couldn't yes. just sit here and imagine it and then never take action to start looking for one. But when the right one shows up and, you know, the universe works really good with technology, when the right mm-hmm. one shows up, you have to take action on things. Yeah. And I mean, I got it at the best price. And and everything lined up perfectly. And that's my manifestation story of the first thing that was on my vision board that showed up for me this year. And I could go on and on and on because I believe the one missing link that most people miss is the belief part. They Mm -hmm. struggle with believing it until it actually shows up in their life and they don't have, they don't feel the belief in their body. Like it's already happened. And Don't we create our own reality, Sandy? Isn't everything around us that we believe our reality? Exactly. And and that's why I, one of the secrets that I tell people is 
When you want to build your belief, the easiest way to do that, because sometimes we don't believe it for ourselves, but we see other people doing it, instead of seeing other people creating, attracting, having whatever it is we desire and thinking, oh, you know, feeling uh, like we've missed out or we're less than or it's not going to happen for us, instead use those magical moments to understand that the very fact that you've witnessed it means it's possible for you too. Mm -hmm. So get excited, like thank the universe, be grateful that you've witnessed it. Then take a moment to also within your own body really embody the feelings that that person would be feeling having created or manifested or attracted that thing, like they've bought a new car, they've gone on a holiday or their business is booming, whatever it is you want. Mm -hmm. But just imagine that that is you having just created whatever they've created that you're witnessing so that you're grateful that you, you're in that moment, the universe has, has allowed you to actually see it, be grateful for them that they've created, aren't they lucky, but also feel as if it's your win, your success. And then what that does is that starts to build your own belief. The more times you can, and one of the things that I actually do on all our live calls in any program that I have is we start with sharing successes. Because when you hear someone else who's just like you, who's just a normal everyday person, creating all this success, you start to kind of build that belief a little bit that maybe it's possible for you too. And when you hear it over and over and over again, all these different people doing amazing things out there and the internet allows you to connect and hear these things, when you hear it over and over again, you start to believe that, you know what, that person just like me has done this, maybe I can. And so if you can continue to do that, that's one really easy way to start to build your belief. The other way is obviously being grateful, but try having as well as a gratitude journal, have a success journal. At the end of every day, write down every success that's happened for you. Now, I'm not talking about, oh, I had a $100,000 a day. Now, I mean, like, what did you do that you would consider a success? And it might be that you, you cooked a great meal or you got your first client or you made your first sale or you actually finished writing that book or it doesn't matter what it is, but yeah. write down the successes and, again, what you focus on is what you create. So the more you focus on it, it's like anything. It's, I say to people, it's like having a magic wand. So when you've got that magic wand and you you point it on something, you think about what you want and bingo, it appears, it starts to build your belief that obviously you can do it and you'll just get better and better and better. But when you do something that causes you to, because life is life, sometimes it's going to be amazing and great and sometimes we're going to hit challenges, when you hit those challenges, you feel like you've kind of dropped the magic wand in the toilet. So it's like, no, 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 just understand that life is all about cycles. There's good and there's bad. When we do go through that dip or through that challenging time, that's the time to get excited and understand that you're just in the cycle where things are a bit rough, but it's going to get even better. Because I always say to people, it's like you've got a slingshot. For me, I was at the very back of that slingshot, like so far back. And when the universe let me go, I flew so far forward. So sometimes, not always, but sometimes when you're experiencing major, major challenges, the reason you're going through that challenge is because the universe has something so much bigger and better waiting mm -hmm. for you. But if you continue to focus on the challenge and talk about the challenge and discuss the challenge with your friends and your family and your mother and blah, 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 then you just create more challenge. But when you're in a challenge, get excited because it means something bigger and better is, is coming for you. So there's yeah. so many little tips and tricks that, that you can use to really allow yourself to not, not focus on, on how things are or how they were or how they could be, but instead focus on the bigger picture and how, the, how you want it to be, how you want your life to be, the things you want to create and experience and have. And when you do that, the shift will happen and you will start to see little things occur in your life, get excited about them, write them down in your success journal, and then you'll just attract more of it. And really it all comes down to we are we are in control of our life because we are in control of our mind. Mm -hmm. And your mind is what's going to help you to create the life of your dreams. Yes, absolutely, tapping into the quantum field and the universe and the divine and God, that all is part of it, but your mind is the gatekeeper. Your mind is the thing that's going to allow you to create what it is that you want or continue to live a life that maybe isn't your ideal life because of the way you think, but you get to choose your thoughts. You get to choose. That's right. Every single day we get to choose and your mind is like the motherboard of a computer. It controls 
every single thing in your entire body, including your ailments, diseases, and everything else that happens. So on this podcast, we have guests that talk about how they design their life because every day we have a choice. So you nailed it right there, Sandy, which is, do you want to choose to wake up and have gratitude and be happy about what's to come and have visions and look toward the future and know that it's possible? Because I couldn't imagine waking up and feeling just defeated. And my choice today is to let life happen to me. And everything always happens to me. And I always get the short end of the stick. That right there feels heavy. I used to live that. I used to live that. Yeah, I did too. (laughs) So I think the biggest, if you're hearing this message and you're like, wow, I needed to hear that because I've never heard it said that way before, the way Sandy and Colleen are explaining it today, then you are here because you were supposed to hear that message which is you every day. And I've even had my own clients, listen to this, Sandy, when I've said, okay, just look for a dollar then, manifest a dollar, whatever it is. I think they didn't want to manifest that dollar so bad because they wanted to prove it wrong. Like, (laughs) but why? When I was reading The Magic by Rhonda Byrne, we had gone through the book, like, I don't know, it was probably my 10th time through it. And I did it with another group for fun. And I had been picking up trash in my neighborhood and my Um, my listeners have heard this story for years. I would pick up trash on a Saturday once a month and I was out reading the book and it was about, you know, manifesting a physical form of money at that point. That was the chapter we were on. I was like, I'm going to find money today. I've never found money. I found keys and empty little liquor bottles and you name it, all (laughs) kinds of little shoes. Who knows who's throwing kids shoes out the door or out the window. But I found a $20 bill just sitting right there on a bush just sitting there on the Mm -hmm. top of a bush right in front of my face. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I picked it up and I said, thank you, thank you, thank you for the money I received today. And I wanted to do something great with that $20. I took a photo of it, posted it in the Facebook group for everybody to see and say, look, I've been picking up trash here for years. And because I'm manifesting money, look what manifested today in a bush. And it was $20. (laughs) See? You just have to believe it and know, I don't know where I'm going to find it. Maybe it's a bag of cash, but I'm going to find it today while I'm out here. And I've never found a dollar or anything since. I honestly, the the things that can happen to people are amazing. I had one of my students tell me um, that they were driving along the road and they were saying she was with her husband. They really wanted more money for something. I can't remember what it was, but they were saying, you know, we really want this money. Let's just imagine that we've got money just flying to us. Next thing they know, literally money is just, they're along the highway and money is just flying at them. Somehow it's fallen out of someone's car or truck or some burglar is like (laughs) throwing his bag out, who knows? But they literally had money. They had to stop and just pick up all this money that was just all over the road, all these notes. So, yeah, it's amazing how incredible and how how. Sometimes it can sound like you got to be kidding me, but money miracles can happen and it all comes down to what you're thinking, what you're feeling and the actions you're taking and you can make it happen. And why not choose to make more money? Why not choose to be wealthy? Not why not choose to be wildly wealthy and be happy about it and be joyful every day and be excited. And I hear so many women use the word struggle and I'm scared and I'm fearful and I'm this and I'm that. And I said, the more you say you are, you will become, you are exactly. absolutely going to get stuck because you're, you're creating it. You're creating. Yeah. So your words are the most powerful thing that can create your reality. And if you don't like your reality, look around you right now because you created it exactly the way it is today. So change it. This is your chance today. And now we're talking with an expert. Sandy's here, of course. And you said you wrote a book, How to Be Wildly Wealthy. Is that available? I believe I have the link here uh, for that book as well. Yeah, it's been translated into, except Chinese, uh, 11 languages. And yeah, available. And um, yeah, it's it's really is all about manifesting money, how to how to completely rewire your mind so that you're manifesting money, because that is the key. And then you also host Wildly Wealthy Women podcast. Tell us about yes, that. Yes. So my Wildly Wealthy Women podcast, it's really, again, just a lot of tips and secrets and, and my story about how I went from welfare to millionaire. Because I think the main thing people need to understand, they hear, you know, oh, welfare to millionaire, oh, she must be different. She must be special. But I dropped out of 
school. I didn't even finish high school. I had no connections. I had no money behind me. I had no great skills, but I discovered the law of attraction. I completely embraced it. I created lots of um, processes and exercises and I still do them to this day. I love what I do and I love sharing what I do. And that's you know really what the book's all about. Yeah. And so in the podcast, are you interviewing individuals or are you just giving tips every time that a new podcast episode comes out so that yeah. someone who would be listening would be able to follow your direction on how to manifest that life for themselves? Yes, that's exactly okay. what it is now. Having said that, my plan is to bring other wealthy, wealthy women into the podcast in the future, but that will probably be next year. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. And where's the best place for our listeners to connect with you? I know you have like a w- wildly wealthy bundle uh, for the yes, listeners. What would be included in that? Yeah. Okay. So if you just want to find out about me, you can go to wildlywealthy.com, but I have a special bundle of guided visualizations and affirmations, mm-hmm. um, a few different processes that can really start that step for you to begin to believe what's possible, to begin to expand your thinking, begin to believe prosperity is there for you. And you can get all of that totally free at wildlywealthyfree.com. I love that. You know, two years ago, my husband and I kept saying, we're going to buy land. We're going to buy land because we're going to build a cabin. And that's when I was like, well, I need to get a new car because I got to be able to take all the kids up there and it has to be all well drive because it's snowing up there. I will tell you, we had no idea how we were going to get the money to purchase this land. And all we wanted was like an acre. We wound up buying five acres, like the best five acres in this community with it backing all up to forests for thousands of miles. Like nobody can build behind us. We got the absolute, I have no idea how we got it. Seriously, like no idea. Thank you, universe. I know. (laughs) And so I'm just here as an example. And so is Sandy to share with you that it's your mindset that has to change. And that can't be forced. We can't force that. That can't be forced on you. It has to be a choice. Sandy said it has to be a choice. So you have to choose. I don't want this life anymore. And I'm choosing to have a different life. And so from today forward, the words I say, the things I write, my gratitude level, saying thank you to a waiter or waitress is not gratitude, not even the slightest of gratitude. You've got to dig deep when it comes to gratitude for being embody it. everything you have today. Yeah. Because if you want to change, want it to change, you have to be grateful for what you have already. That is crucial in these steps. Yeah. This was great. I love these conversations. And so many people think it takes, I tell people all the time, it takes about 80% attitude and 20% skill to really become successful in a business. Because how many people have you met and you're like, how the heck, how did they become successful? Yeah. You know, Um, because they probably don't have the skills that you were thinking they would have to have to be able to become successful. So it's 80% attitude. And that attitude has everything to do with what you believe you deserve, what you believe your life is, what you manifest. Any last words for our listeners today, Sandy? Um, I think probably last words would be once you decide what you really want, be persistent. Don't give up. Understand that, you know, there's going to be ups and downs, but if you continue to focus on what you want, you continue to take action, you continue to embody the person you need to be to have what it is that you want, the universe will deliver. It doesn't single out, you know, it works for you, you and you, but not you over there. It works for everyone. So just really embody what it is that you want, body, mind and spirit and and persist, 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 persist. persist. Because too many people give up along the road. They, you know, the first challenge is like, oh, I'm not meant to have that. Or, oh, you know, I'm, it's never going to work out for me. Persist, honestly, it will. I love that, Sandy. Thank you so much. And for all of you listening, before we close today, just remember, you're the only you that's ever been. You're the only you that's ever going to be. This is your one chance for you to choose to be wildly wealthy, to make that choice, to feel it, to believe it. Mind, body, spirit. Just like Sandy said, this is your chance now and you can do it. It does not take a Ph.D. It does not even take a high school graduation (laughs) certificate because Sandy doesn't have one. And I never graduated college, so it doesn't take that either. And we're here to share with you that you can do it, too. You just have to choose that you want to change your life. 
Thank you, Sandy, so much for being a guest on today's show. And to all of you, thank you so much for being our loyal listeners. Make sure you reach out to Sandy and reach out to us at info at ColleenBiggs.net. Let us know episodes and guests that you want to hear about that you are struggling with in your life and would love some tips on how to build your business or build the life and design it the way that you want it. Until next time, bye-bye for now. Be you and be strong. We hope you enjoyed our show today as our guests shared their secrets on designing their life by taking the necessary leaps to expand their influence and attract the right people and clients into their lives. To start these easy steps for yourself, be sure to visit www.colleenbiggs.net forward slash freebies to download the seven ways to increase your exposure today.